Hello, it's Miss Haig again. We're doing a collaboration today with another Miss Haig, Eva Haig, and we're going to draw a Hunter Vassa image. So we're going to look at the work of Frederick Hunter Vassa, who's an Austrian painter, an architect, uh, a sculptor, created lots and lots of beautiful work that we're going to use as inspiration for our artwork. Uh, key features of his work, trees, buildings, faces, wobbly lines, he was quoted as saying rulers are the devil's tool. He worked a lot with landscapes and he created uh, organic shapes in his work, so not mathematical geometric shapes, but much more organic shapes that were very wobbly and the lines were very um, straight as I say, because he didn't use rulers. He created buildings, because he was an architect, so he, um, that's an actual building, uh, I think it's in Austria, that one, that he created, it's um, a form of council housing, and then these are examples of his work. Some of them are other people's interpretations of his work, these ones, but we're going to use them all for inspiration. So it's Frederick Hunterwasser that we're going to be looking at, and this is the work we're going to be using as inspiration. The plan of action today is that we're going to use this as our uh, example. This is what I created earlier today and we're going to make our own version of one of these. So things that you'll need to be able to do it, you're going to need some A4 paper, ideally slightly thicker paper, not copier paper. You're going to need a pencil, you're going to need a paintbrush, you're going to need probably a black pen or some kind of writing pen or black felt tip pen. You'll need some felt tips or some watercolours or some poster paint or acrylic paint. If you're going to use poster paint or acrylic paint you need to water it down a little bit uh, because you want it very thin. You're also going to need some wax crayons or oil pastels but wax crayons are going to be the, the thing for today. So I've also got some water and I've got a tile as I had last time. Uh, you don't necessarily need those, but I like to use them uh, just to water down my paints and use them for mixing. So the first thing we're going to do is take inspiration from our Hunter Vassa images and we're going to make sure that you, uh, you're you going to draw your image and you're going to draw it really accurately. Or you're going to draw it using the things that he did. So you can do it landscape or portrait. I'm going to do mine portrait upright, uh, just so that you can see it on the camera a little bit better but uh, it's completely up to you which way you want to do it, okay? So, I'm going to start with my Hunter Vassa hills. So, because he was a landscape artist, he often created a lot of hills in his work. So, I'm going to draw a wibbly wobbly hill and I'm going to put some lines on it. Like that. Because when you look at his work, you'll notice that he doesn't just create one flat area of green for the hills, he creates lots of areas of dark and light. So we have to build into our drawing some lines. We're also going to put some houses in. So you could put one big house in the middle if you wanted, or you could put a series of houses along the hillside. You could put some down at the bottom, you could put some at the top. It's completely up to you how you want to do it, but you want to fill your image with some Hunter Vassa houses. So different ways in which you could do that. If you wanted like a slightly larger house in the middle, remember it's supposed to be wobbly. So don't think, oh no, I've done it wrong because it's wobbly. That's the whole point. And then I'm going to put on the top of mine the kind of onion shape that's often in his work. It, some children call it troll's hair. Some children call it the onion or the garlic bulb. But it's completely up to you. So I'm going to put one of those on top of my Hunter Vassa house. I'm going to put a door on this house and I'm going to fill the inside of it with another little section just so I've got more than one thing to colour in when it comes to colouring in. I might put a smaller house next door or it could be a garage extension and I'm going to put a triangular roof on that one. I'm not going to put a door on this one, I'm going to put a circle and make it almost like a target and put that in the middle of this one. moving the camera so you can see. Oh no, they go off the table. Oh no. There we go. So I've got uh, two houses, I've got some hills. You'll notice sometimes in his work that there are faces hidden in his work. So I'm going to put some eyes here. 
I'm going to build in some eyes, an almond shape or a lemon shape, a squashed lemon and a circle inside. Uh, I'm going to put a sun on my piece of work. I'm going to do a swirl because I quite like doing those. Then I'm going to put some lollipop trees on. So Hunter Vassar's work often included trees and they were often uh, called lollipop trees because they're very cartoonish in the sense that they are a swirl or a circle. If I do another one here, if you can see that, yeah. Another one here that's then got a trunk at the bottom, like that. So I might put a cloud on, although it's not a particularly very well drawn cloud, but it says cloud all the same. And then I might put another one just going off the edge of the page. Make sure we can see that. I think so. I'll just double check. Yeah, that's good. So once you've done that, you've got then got uh, a basic outline based on the work of Hunter Vassar. So when you've done that, you're then going to use your oil pastels or your wax crayons, if you've got them somewhere. And you are going to put some outlines on your work. So you don't have to outline everything, but basically what the plan is, is that you are going over the outline of everything now, creating little fences, if you will, that go around the outside of your drawing. So that when you add something wet, i.e. the paint or the watercolour or the felt tips, you're creating a little fence so the colours won't cross over. That's the plan. So you press on quite hard, not so hard that you snap the crayon. If you do that, you've probably pressed on a little bit too hard, but hard enough that you're creating a solid block all the way through the image. Now you can change colours. You're not stuck with one colour. You don't have to go, I've done this bit red, so it's all got to be red, or I've done this bit green, so on and so forth. You can choose any colours you want. I like the brighter ones just because it will give more of a contrast between the felt tips or paint and the um, actual uh, wax crayon, but that's completely up to you. So when it comes to my hills, I'd be tempted to use kind of things out of the, um, the greens, the yellows, the ones that are near each other on the colour wheel. So if you remember, colours that are near each other or next door neighbours on the colour wheel, they work really well together. And those would work to create my, I can't find my other green, uh, those would work to make my hills and my green areas that I want to keep green. Put some yellow on there as well. You could also, as well as outlining, if you want to put in a little bit of extra shade or a little bit of extra texture on the surface, you absolutely can. I would fill the entire image. I wouldn't just leave it like that. I would go around everything. Then once you've done that, you're going to take either your felt tips, your paint, or whatever it is that you want to do. Same as the last video we did, I'm going to use water and felt tips because it is my favourite. And you are going to, I'm going to use this tile, but you could use a piece of plastic or you could use something else. Um, as long as it's nothing really important and it's nothing that kind of is going to get spoilt. Uh, and I'm going to colour onto my tile a little bit of my felt tips. So that I've got um, some colours to work with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my water, I'm going to take one of my colours, mix it, and I'm going to start painting onto my surface. So you can see I've created some green. Because I've got a yellow and a green on here, I'm going to mix them a little bit and I'm going to start adding them to my background. Now, each area that I've sectioned off here doesn't have to be the same colour. It can be different colours or different shades of green. So it doesn't all have to be one flat green. It could be lots of different shades and lots of different things. So if I use a little bit of the blue, that will darken it. Because obviously more blue you add to green, the more of it will become a bluey green and it will become darker. If I added more yellow to it, then it will become lighter and a kind of yellowy green. So then we're looking at tertiary colours. That's the next step out after primary, then into secondary, and then into your tertiary colours. Oops, I made that a little bit messy. And you can start doing that all over the image so you're not restricted. If you wanted to, if your paper will let you, you'll know what I mean if you start doing this and it doesn't work. Your paper's not very um, 
porous probably. I could, although saying that I've not gone around here with it. I can put on a little bit of red straight onto my paper. Clean your brush, because obviously if you mix red and green, you're going to end up with brown because they're complementary colours. That means they're opposite each other on the colour wheel. They make each other more vibrant, but they don't mix very well. So, if I've cleaned my brush, I can then blend it out a little bit more. So, you can blend, you can also do that to blend two colours together. If I took a little bit, I don't think I've got an orange, which is a bit disappointing, but, but I can go, in fact, I'll do yellow here, and then I'll do green going downwards. This might work, it might not, because green's very dark, but we'll try. Clean my brush, again, because I don't want the red to contaminate the yellow and the green, because it'll make a mess. And then I can work, oh, actually, that's quite nice. I can work into each other like that. So I've worked directly onto the sheet rather than mixing it on a tile. So if you don't have a tile or a piece of plastic or something to work on, then you can do it straight onto the paper and that's no problem at all. Any felt tips will work with this. These are watercolour ones that I bought from Aldi that I've spoke about before. No, Lidl, in fact, that I spoke about before and they are brilliant. But I've got also normal felt tips, anything at all. As I say, watercolour paint. If you water down... Um, poster paint or acrylic paint then you would find that that would go on as well and do the same thing so where you put the wax crayon it resists that means it doesn't stick the paint doesn't stick to it so it leaves these gaps so the idea is that you've created these little barriers these little fences and then the paint doesn't go all the way to those surfaces once you've finished it and you've colored the entire thing in and you're really happy with it then what I would do is wait for it to dry. It's really hot, so it'll not take very long. Uh, but if you leave it to dry a little bit, you can then get a black pen. Now, this is a Japanese um, writing pen, but it's got a, a brush end. But you don't have to have this. You can have any felt tip or a black writing pen or a black, black rollerball or a gel pen. Anything you can add fine detail with. So if there's any areas that you then think, well, actually... I wanted to make this bit thick and thin. I wanted to go back in with a little bit more detail. If you see this, this is the original that I did this morning, you'll be able to see that I've put on some little highlights. So I've added on little areas of shade and little areas of fine detail. So for example, uh, that's a bit wet. If I painted that bit, let's say I have, I could go and add in some little extra lines. I could add little corners in. I could add fine detail so that my image looks a little bit more in depth. When it comes to the sky, obviously you can pick blues, you could pick uh, purples, you could create a rainbow and put a rainbow into the background and blend those colours. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. As I say, you can work straight onto the paper or you could work onto another surface and then transfer the paint or the ink across. So, I think... That is it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoy the sunshine. I hope you're staying safe and looking after yourselves. And I will see you next time. In fact, we will both see you next time for instalment four. Have a lovely day.